Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Challenge Your Life. So, as you can see by my top, believe it or not, I am taking on the Ireland way. I have decided not only to do the Ireland way, but to also film it and record it and hopefully I can uh, give you some fantastic uh, footage along the way. Not only am I uh, filming it and hiking it, I'm also raising money for charity. And not just one charity, but two charities. I've made this video to show you the amount of effort and preparation that I've put in in order to get this just up and running. So, about the route. I've decided to hike the Ireland Way, which is a 1,000 kilometre route. Now, the Ireland Way isn't an actual Waymark trail. Instead, it uses most of the Bear of Breffney Way and a chunk of the Ulster Way. Starting down at Castletown Bear, I'll be following the Bear of Breffney Way in the footsteps of the epic story of Donald Cam O'Sullivan Bear's march up through the country. Don't know who Donald Cam is? Well, don't worry. I'll be filling in some of the amazing details and events along the way up to Leitrim. After that, the trail continues up to Black Lion, where the Bear Breffney Way ends. Then it's just a short hop over the border to Belcou to join the Ulster Way in Northern Ireland. The Ulster Way winds up the west border of Northern Ireland until it reaches the coast. From here, it's onto Bally Castle, where the finishing line is the Children of Lear Monument. By the end of this adventure, I'll have walked 1,000 kilometres over 620 miles through 14 counties in two countries, all in one amazing little island. Preparation for this adventure has been an intense affair. When I'm not training and conditioning myself, I'm researching everything I can about the route and what I'll need. I'm also trying to source equipment, and I'm dealing with email after email after email. I've upgraded my filming gear, so I'm trying to become more and more proficient with the drone. I'm better comfortable with my new Lumix. There have been late nights, early mornings, and all with full-time hours at work. So it's all just a bit frustrating, really. Um, less than a month to go, and I've not even got a penny raised. Um, it's just really tough at the moment. Um, I'm raring to go, I'm I'm willing to go and you know, I don't even have a fundraiser. Um the 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 link well basically the final word hasn't been given the go ahead. Uh just waiting on um higher powers to uh give me the go. And um yeah, it's just just really, really frustrating um to know that you're pushing as much as you can, try and get things done and Certain things kind of get done until, you know, you get that go ahead and you're kind of planning or preparing in hope that they will. And, you know, that fear that if uh, somebody decides that they don't think this is a good idea, that everything you've planned and you're working for just ends up being for nothing. I work in Little in Westport. It's a fast paced setup that pushes you to work hard. It can take sometimes up to three hours before the shop opens to get everything ready. There can be some very early starts and late finishes, but overall I enjoy it. Of course, I wouldn't be able to tempt this if it wasn't for my wonderful boss, Mantis. He was also free to share a few words about the whole thing and what he thought of me. You're a very crazy man, to be honest. Um, but that's how I told you before that this big, big, big example for other people is that uh, we have to do something for the others, not just for ourselves. Um, to be honest, um, I'm really proud to be working with you and I'm glad that I have the person like you in my store. So, best of luck, Mikey. Little's charity partner is the Young People's Mental Health Charity, Jigsaw. And fundraising manager Justin McDermott was kind enough to tell me all about it and what he thought about the hike. Jigsaw, we're the National Centre for Youth Mental Health. Um, and our vision or our mission is an Ireland where every single young person's mental health is valued and supported. And we work towards that in three different ways. Uh, we work towards that by number one, influencing change, number two, strengthening communities, and number three, providing services. In terms of services, you're sitting here today in Jigsaw here in Galway, um, and Jigsaw Galway is one of 13 free confidential and non-judgmental services that we provide to young people uh, between the ages of 12 and 25.
A couple of things that come to mind. Firstly, uh, I am incredibly jealous in some ways uh, because it sounds like an amazing, an amazing challenge. Uh, secondly, I'm amazed um, that you're taking it on because I think, uh, I think that loads of people have uh, great ideas of what they'd like to do, but to actually follow through and, and commit yourself to doing it is brilliant. And then the third is definitely admiration. It's admiration for um, for your commitment, uh, for your desire, uh, and for also using this as an opportunity to um, obviously challenge yourself, but then also use it as a platform to um, get that conversation about mental health and ensuring that, that by using your challenge as a platform that you will you will promote some of our key messaging around your mental health. If you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know that I've had my own mental health battles and I've had and I've struggled uh, throughout the years. Having someone like Jigsaw there when I was younger could have helped significantly reduce the suffering that I went through. You know, it's a really long haired road I've been down and I've suffered in silence. Um, I suppose one thing uh, that really has motivated me to do this is facing my fears. Um, it's one thing that has crippled me throughout my life and something I've only realised recently is fear. And it's something that when you realise you don't want to help rule your life, you'll do anything to push yourself to do something that you wouldn't normally do. To actually go out there and live your life. Well, I managed to get a really good hike today, which is good. But um, I had a number of teething problems, just the, working with the drone and the camera. Just didn't click. Um, it's kind of left me feeling that uh, there's a lot to be just a lot to be learned there, um, so, so I'm doing it now. But it's just you know that it's quite disheartening to know how kind of out of it, out of my depth I feel uh, using the uh, using these tools. Um, I was supposed to happy to report that you know the 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 hike itself was over tricky terrain. Um, the bag handled beautifully. Um, I didn't get that tired and uh, yeah just a lot of work to do a lot of work to do with drone practice and uh, kind of improving my camera skills so this is the bag I'm bringing um, I'm going to fill them up with uh, these guys water uh, I've got a few things in there so just uh, to get them weighted so yeah I'll try and do about seven km at least seven kilometers the way to backpack, if I get out onto a trail, I could do up as far as um, 15, 20, um, depending on the trail. Um, yeah, just trying to wait it as, as, as much as possible to recreate the conditions of the hike. So, I'm pretty much my training. And if I do it, if I do the seven or six kilometer, um, then I try and push myself to the hour. Just here in Akko for some filming slash training. I was at work at 3 a.m. this morning, and uh, here now for, for a bit of training. We're going to go up this. So yeah, it should be fun. I was also breaking in my brand new spanking boots as my old pair had seen the last of their days. This intelligent person you see before you is trying to explain that he left that pink cable behind him on the way up. He ran down, found it, ran all the way back up and feeling great and thinking he had good shot wanted to explain to you the whole scenario. But of course you forgot to turn on the mic. Now other than being silly, I did manage to get some absolutely stunning shots around Ackle, which I was able to use for the promotion trailer for the Ireland Way. If you want to see the trailer, click the grey circle on the top corner to check it out. It's a uh, production finished of the trailer finally. Uh, that's three days, two mornings where I was working at 3am in the morning. No work this morning thankfully, but um, I've got work now at 2 o'clock, so I've got to rush now, get a shower and get back to work from 2 to 8, so it's been one hell of a three days. Less than two weeks to go, people pulling from me left, right and centre, getting phone calls, getting all this sort of stuff, and uh, going here, going there, trying to get everything sorted, so the mad rush is on. The new posters just came in, I just got them from the printers. They are looking spectacular. This is this, this my little, this my little nephew and his and, and, and her sister. So he's gonna give me a five euro advance. Put it in the bucket, guys. Come on. 
Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. With the poster and bucket set up in Westport, it was time to hit the road. Little in Castle Bar had given me permission to put up one there. The two Balanastors had also given me permission. With the buckets and the posters in all the mail stores, I was hoping to get some serious funds for Jigsaw. It was time to get back in the car and back down to Westport, as Port West, the outdoor shop, had sponsored me with some gear. The second charity is the Kevin Bell Repatriation Trust, a truly amazing charity. And I was lucky enough to meet Colin Bell. Uh, Colin, nice to meet you. How are you doing, Michael? Yeah. Well, about five years ago in June in 2013, my son Kevin uh, was killed in a hit and run incident in, up in Woodlawn in New York. And such was the, the, the amount of support we got from the people of Newry. There was a pub quiz that raised £42,000. There was a fun run and walk that raised 20000 And all, in all, there was about £150,000 raised to bring Kevin home. And we decided then that we would use this money to help other families who, who suffered the same type of loss abroad. And in the five years since Kevin's death, unfortunately, now this week we've we've passed the 550 mark for for loved ones brought home. What do you think of this whole charity? Then? <laughs> well, I've heard of people who like a good walk, but I think it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> walk, walk the length of Ireland is a uh, is it, it, is, it will be some feet, uh, and you'll need some feet to do it. <laughs> Over the last two years, this charity has been quite prevalent in my life as two incredible people that I was so privileged to know died. <sighs> One week to go. So wind and rain is uh, not deterring us. I'm here for the Kevin Bell uh, bucket collection. Uh, so hopefully we can get some uh, uh, big, big funds here today. So of course, uh, I'd be nowhere without uh, the volunteers and uh, Jamie has been happy enough to uh, have a, a, bit, a bit of a chat with me. Uh, what do you think of the walk I'm doing? Yeah, it's impressive. Impressive, crazy. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to do it, but I'm impressed. I think you'll be well fit for it. You'll be well fit for it. It felt good to finally get some fundraising under the belt before I started. The intensity of the last month alone has been something else. From all the practice that I've done, to the tough trainings, not to mention learning, planning, highs, lows, all with 35 plus hours a week working. It's been some challenge. However, deep down, feelings of wondering if I've done enough linger. With all my stuff ready to go, there's one last thing left to do. So I'm ready, I'm all prepared. The next time you'll see me is Castletown Bear. Uh, I invite you all to join on this journey. <laughs>